in New York City. The Cavs, well, they went into MSG and completely dominated the Knicks. The game got so out of hand, Cavaliers players decided to attempt the water bottle, bottle challenge on the bench, you know, where you try to flip it over and all that stuff. This was in front of everyone during play. Kyrie, you know, he, he talked about it after the game. Man, the water bottle is just like, if you land it, you're just like a legend. So I was just trying to follow in the kid's footsteps and, and really just, man, put my mark on the water bottle challenge, man. Oh, man. It was awesome. Oh, man, I love so this. Good. I love this. this game talking about Phil and LeBron. And LeBron's uh, look look here, man. <laughs> LeBron and his posse yeah, over there exactly. chilling in the fourth quarter. <laughs> wow, that was uh, hilarious. So, you know, they, they being very disrespectful, but it was it was good. I mean, Phil disrespected him, so that's the way, you know, to rub it in his face. Absolutely. They chilling on the bench <laughs> playing uh, water bottle challenge. Why? The game's still going on. How disrespectful can you be? I was just, playing, I was, I was just playing that game with my kids, but the only difference is I'm retired and I'm <laughs> looking out at Palm Bro, well, water. listen, they needed something to do in the fourth quarter. They yeah. the word it wasn't no basketball. No, nah, they, they, they were extremely bored during right? the game. There wasn't no hoops to be played. <laughs> so, hey. And we've seen LeBron do this before, right? The dancing in Chicago. I, I, that. I loved it because it, loved uh, it because everybody was expecting yeah, LeBron yeah. to say something. <laughs> so he came out here and just did his little antics on the, on, on the sideline. Well, he said something, just not verbally. But yeah. pretty much <laughs> telling Phil, like, hey, you know what? We cool over here. You need to worry about your yes, side. I want to bring this LeBron back. That Imagine if he was doing this today as a 32-year-old. He spoke a lot of words last night. Yes, right? Right? Without yeah. having to say anything. Yes. All right, there's a more serious angle to the game last night, and it's what's going on with your guy, Carmelo Anthony. Two nights ago, the man dropped 35 points to extend his team to a four-game winning streak, and the same night, Phil Jackson goes on television and says Melo holds the ball too long. Come on, so then Phil. last night, he responds with an eight-point performance on only nine shot attempts. That's not like him, and he was visibly frustrated afterward when he was asked about what Phil said. I mean, Chunks, what do you think? Does, does Melo have to get out from under Phil? Is it time for these guys to well, separate? What's first, going on? first of all, you can't tell me that Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant didn't hold the ball oh, mm -hmm. four or five seconds in the shot clock. Sometimes you earn that right. <laughs> I know. You earn that right. <laughs> Secondly, I, I just, it, if it working in New York means they're going to contend for a championship, it's never going to work there. Right. It's not going to work with Melo and Phil Jackson and that triangle. It's not going to work. It's just that simple. Look, Melo knows, you know, what he's up against. He had the opportunity to sign with who? Chicago. Chicago right? So, I mean, yeah. you, you, you got to take this all in. This right. this what comes with, you know, being under Phil Jackson. So this <laughs> this what happens. And in order for that to work, Phil has to come down and coach that team. Well, that's not going to happen at this that's, that's the only way. Still, that's the still, only way. They don't have the personnel. I, yeah, I don't care if he comes Phil down. Phil coaches that team and they run the triangle. That thing is dated, bro. Like, yeah. You got to score. You got to shoot the three. You yeah. got to score a lot of points in the today's game. <clears throat> that's well, I just with. think from a respect factor, with Phil being up there in the office and he's making his little comments down to Melo, Melo's not going to listen. A lot of us as players, regardless, we had Joe Dumars. We didn't agree everything that Joe said from up top. Right. We listened to Larry Brown because Larry Brown was the coach so on the bench. court. He was on the bench. He's the one that's in the foxhole with Yeah, you. but no matter who's telling him, Melo's not changing. We're, we're what, 14 no. years into Melo's career? We, we know the game Melo plays, and you build around it's, that it's, instead of trying to fit him into something else. It's hard to try to change a guy that's been playing that way for <laughs> 13, 14 years. And it's years. still such a good talent. Why waste him doing something you shouldn't have him be doing? Yeah, or making fun of him on television, I Chris Paul appeared on the Open Run podcast and was asked if he'd ever try to join forces with his BFFs, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. And Chris responded, quote, anything is possible. Definitely anything is possible. You see them here on the boat, having some nice wine. Rip, would you like to see the banana boat crew here play together? Well, I do. Just from the simple fact that I love that the players are taking over the league. Yeah. If you think about it, back in the day, it used to be the GMs and the presidents of teams making all the decisions. Then it went to the agents. You know, pretty much putting up super teams or whatever, whatever, placing guys on where oh, they want to go to. Come out, come out, come out. But from a player standpoint, <laughs> hold on, take a full, I don't take a 20. <laughs> hold on, take I, a full I, time, hold on. I, I love it. Take you a full, don't take a 20, man. Get them, man. You will love to see these four guys team up. I would love. I mean, you went to go to Orlando and play with Grant Hill. Matt, get him. I wasn't an all star. That was the same thing. I was, no, I get wasn't an all star. You want all star then? No. Who was on the verge of all star? No, I wasn't. You were still top five player in the league. You talking about Hall of Famers? 
Mac right here, bro. Drafted. Well, Mac, you were still top five player in the league, though, Mac. Not the time I went to hey, join. No, dude, I was only on my third year. I don't Come on. It's the reason why they gave you Mac's money, Mac. How come, Charlie? I don't want to see start. these guys. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to see these guys play together. For one, they don't. Their games don't match. Right. CP needs the ball for twenty seconds for, in the shot clock. For US, USA basketball. So does LeBron. They did it for USA basketball. So yeah, that's it's, it's easy to sacrifice during yeah, USA you're basketball. Destroying the lead no, with I, this. The lead is already destroyed, I, but everybody doing what they're look, doing. Let's be, let's, Pretty much. Come on, let's be honest. I'm, if and when these guys all got together, it is not right now. We are talking about a couple years down the road, when a time when everyone's sort of at the end of their career. I don't even think that oh, they would okay, think well, if they got together, they would be championship contenders. They would go out, have fun, get to play hey, with listen, their best I don't friends, see and make a little down, noise. Though, right now, if still, that's I mean, the man is eventually. Yeah, right? I, I don't see him slowing down. Like he's like Benjamin Button. Button. Got the I understand. He's really like Benjamin Button. But he will turn 36. He will turn 37. I mean, there is a time. These I don't guys know if he will. I don't know if he will. I think he's already 36. <laughs> if that team got together on the second right now, right now <laughs> the Warriors will beat that team right now. Right. That's my point. You can put all them together right now, Warriors still beat them. So I think when they are talking about doing this, it is not necessarily as a super team that would break the league. It is to have some fun. I just don't want to see it. Fans would like it, except for you. It's a big, a great ticket. It's a great, great awesome ticket. Great okay, ticket. for that, we still have more to come on the jump. But first, we do have to do our distant replay. This is all the way back on this date in 2000 with a young Aaron Davis. Friend of the program. Got it on the ground. And excuse me. Oh, Davis the draw. Oh, oh. 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 Okay. 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 He was a problem. That boy was so cool. I'm happy you showed that because most kids, they don't they know who Baron Davis is, man. Baron da well, Davis was one of the best. Beast. Yes. yes. And then when I was just starting at ESPN, Chauncey and Rip's Pistons team was the first NBA team I really covered on a regular basis for SportsCenter. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We came a long way. way. Oh, there look at that outfit right there. <laughs> that was such a fun group. Chance, Rip, Tayshawn Prince, Ben Wallace, and, you know, of course, Sheed. Those guys, I mean, y'all were the opposite of a super team. There was not a single max player on the roster. A, a lot of these guys were in their third or fourth franchise because things hadn't worked out elsewhere. Chauncey, the guy who would end up as finals MVP. Well, the Pistons were his fifth franchise. There were some people starting to wonder if he was a draft bust. But together, well, all those guys together... They were so much greater than the sum of their parts. I have to say, I have covered a lot of teams since then, a lot of championships. I've never seen a group quite like those guys. They pulled off one of the greatest upsets in NBA Finals history when they beat the Lakers. And that LA team, well, that was a super team. Kobe, Shaq, Gary Payton, Carl Malone. And yet, these guys dismantled them, both physically and mentally. And all of this, I got to say, was very top of mind for me last night. Not only knowing Rip was going to join us today, but also watching Golden State deliver that beatdown against the Clippers. It's full circle here, right? I mean, here we are again with another super team of Hall of Famers and All-Stars. But the difference is this is now an era of super teams, right? So, Chance, I mean, do you think that your scrappy Pistons team, a team like that, could win a title in this league again or in this era of free agency and the way the contracts are? That, that's done. Well, uh, I I'll say this. Um, and, and people ask all the time, you know, um, our great teams, what, how would, could they beat the Warriors? Could they beat these great teams? It de to me, it depends on the rules. Yeah. Right. If it's yeah. the 2004 mid 2000 rules, we'll be just fine. <laughs> we'll be just fine. And, and, we'll, and we will win. Right. If it's 2016 where you can't play D and you can't, you can't touch a guy, you can't play the way that we play, we're going to have our hands full. It'd be tough. It's also and, about, and, and it's just that simple to me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not just about like what kind of players you have, but also just the the emotion and the way you guys played together, sure, right? Sure. It wasn't just about talent with you guys. Absolutely, we had a great mix. I mean, we were a type of team that just didn't play together on the basketball court. We also shared a lot of special moments off the basketball court, doing Christmas parties together, spending New Year's Eve at Rashid Wallace's home. Oh, can and, we can, wait? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> can we get that story? Yeah, yeah, no, that was There's that was an experience. That's exclusive. <laughs> that was a good story there. Well, what made us so special, and if, and if you match us up to a Golden State Warriors team, was we were able to switch every position. So with Ben Wallace and and, and Ra Rashid Wallace being our rim protectors on our team, they were great on ball defenders. So even at times when we played against Cleveland and LeBron James, 
we would never track pick and roll. We would just switch and say, all right, Ben or right. Rashi, guard that person man up. When you look at, at their squad and then you look and say, they're talking about matching up against the Warriors, what, what do you think? It's the same. Uh, I got to piggyback off of uh, Chauncey. It, it depends on what era right. because the rules uh, make a huge difference in this. And today's game, it allows these guys to run free through the paint, through the paint off of these screens. And, and that's what they're great at. But when you can put some wood on them, <laughs> them all to the sheet, put some yes. wood on and slow them down. You don't need Max players. You don't have that. those legs. You don't have those fresh legs when you get wood on you throughout the game. So it all depends on what area you play. And then if you look at Rashid Wallace, who's going to guard Rashid? That was always our matchup that we was always going to explore playing against different always. teams. Nobody could guard him. Always had an ace in the hole with that. How yeah, much though, would you I have liked what, to see Prime Rasheed versus Prime Draymond Green? I mean, How cool I, I, would that have first been? First of all, I love Draymond, yes. right. but they don't belong in the same class. Really? Not at all. No. no. Draymond was a pup. No. In our locker room. He was our guy. Yes, he used to come okay, in with Jordan Dumont. Draymond He's our now, coach. not your little And I'm one. talking about Rashid then. <laughs> not I at think all. Draymond, although he's very arrogant sometimes. <laughs> You're talking about 6'11". As it should be. Yeah, I, I think Draymond would probably tell you the same thing. Really? You're Did talking you know? about 6'11 with mouth. Right. You're talking about Rashid <laughs> Watson. <laughs> yes. Tracy, you played these guys in a memorable series. I'm just Matt changed our Matt changed our our team a lot, man. With his comments a couple of times he made out there. See, I wasn't gonna bring that up. Oh, okay. I just wanna make sure <laughs> you didn't talk about it. <laughs> but no, I, we had these guys three one, and I'm out there with two rookies in my starting lineup, uh, Gordon Gibercheck and Drew Gooden, and things were looking promising to us. And you said. And I don't know what was said. <laughs> I don't know. Look at that. Yeah, I, got I, I, know, I know what was said. I do, too. We talked about it. After 3-1 being up, he got up on the stand. <laughs> yes, he, he did. Said, With his chest out, too. And finally, it was good that we're going to get out of the first round. <laughs> I and said, that I right that. there is what got him beat. Yes. That, that's my guy. But I will say this. That got us beat? Yes, yeah, it that, did. That's what got you beat. No. You, I mean, you had a chance of... No. You, what, one thing about it, you let, I think a sleep, you, let, do you let a sleeping dog sleep. Absolutely. Is what you do. You let a sleeping dog sleep. He was averaging 47 on us after two games. I will mm -hmm. say that. I mean, we couldn't stop him. We couldn't two. stop him at all. With he, a very we had Michael Curry on just him. Put up those next year. <laughs> and then we injected Tayshawn into the game and made him be accountable for somebody. He was guarding Michael Curry, who he didn't have to play defense, right. just offense. We couldn't guard. I mean, I mean, no, he's, he's tough great. to guard. No, I had to guard him. That's what happened. Because Late in the series, he had, he had yeah. to guard me. <laughs> I had to start guarding this guy because he had he went for 40 yeah. and then got on him again, and he went for 40. Back to back. But you well, know what was funny? But you know what was funny, back? though? Because remember, Rick Carlisle was only playing us 20-something minutes a game. And when T-Mac made that comment, we sat down with Joe, and Rick Carlisle was like, hey, you know what? You can't just play us 20-something really? minutes a game. Changed you got to play us 40 minutes a game. Just like he was oh, getting yeah. played, playing oh, 40 yeah. minutes a game. And that changed the series. Now, y'all have been teammates in Toronto yeah. prior to this. Was there a lot of trash uh -huh. talk between the two of you during that series? No, nah, there was no trash no, talk. No, no, never. No, not when, right. no, never. I was about business. We always been to, yeah, we always been good. <laughs> <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> there was a little trash talk last night with the Warriors <laughs> Clippers game. We're just going to segue to that. I'm not sure we learned anything new about either team last night. This was the seventh straight time Golden State beat the Clips. This time, they didn't even have to shoot well to do it. Steph was 0 for 8 from 3. KD was held to 16 on 5 to 17 shooting. They still won. I mean, Tracy, did you learn anything? You were in that building last night. Did you learn anything from that game? No, I mean I've been telling y'all for the last couple years, this roster, Golden State sets the bar. Like, mm -hmm. that's who you're, you're, you're eyeing, right, in the Western Conference. This team doesn't match up well against them. You have three non-shooters in your starting lineup. That's Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, and Mute. You cannot play these guys against Golden State because they're, they're non-factors. Who's going to do the scoring against these guys? You sit here trying to trade threes, uh, twos while these guys are out here knocking down threes, and their mental toughness wasn't there last night. Blake played he, he, he didn't play smart basketball. I think he belt when KD was on him defensively. You got to take advantage of that. You got to exploit that. That's what Golden State does so well. They exploit matchups throughout the game. Blake didn't do that last night. He was belling out when KD was on him. You got it. And when I look at him, too, I kind of say the same thing. Because when you look at the Clippers, I mean, with their roster, they got to they gotta play smash mouth basketball. Kind of how we played in Detroit. Last night, they were too busy trying to play like, you know, Golden State. Right. And I look at Blake Griffin. He's 
shooting way too many jump shots. And like Max says, if he goes and says, hey, I'm going to protect the paint, I'm going to dominate the paint, I'm going to force Golden State to make an adjustment on the opposite end and, and play a bigger lineup for them to compete with them. But but right now they're trying to play like Golden State, and they can't beat them playing no. that way. I mean, Tracy, you said that mentally Blake wasn't where you wanted him to be. You, Mr. Team Leader, if you were in that locker room, what would you pull aside, Blake, and what would you say? Because well, he's uh, obviously the talent. All the pieces are right there for him to play the way you guys want him to. Didn't you try when you, well, when well, you played there? Well, it's funny because you, you can see why I mean this guy is so tight. Everything, <laughs> everything he just said, I would demand that Blake grip. No, you catch it on the block Absolutely. and you go to work on the block. Right. You got KD guarding you who's long, but he, he's, there's nothing he can do with you down there. Even with Draymond, face him up, make a play. I'm not gonna let you take those jump shots early in the games. I'm not passing it to you out there. Right. Listen, so yeah. that that that's what I would do as a point guard. And, and once he does that, then we can open it up mm -hmm. a little bit. Somebody, somebody has to be demanding on that team. They beat you six straight times. Who's gonna put their foot down and say enough is enough? Well, it's funny you should mention that because there is someone who started to do that last night. Just maybe not who you would expect. Former Warrior, current Clippers center, most Spades. Here's what he told the Orange County Register when asked what the Clippers can do to reach the next level. Quote. First, we need to start really just leaving the refs alone. Guys, just got to sacrifice, do some other things than scoring, do some other things than your personal goals. Just try something new. They've been doing it here for four or five years, and it hasn't been working. Mm. So it is time mm, yeah. to try mm. something new. Well said. Uh, well, Love his voice. Mm. Right? I think because they need a different voice in that locker room. Well, see, here's the but problem, he's, though. He just got there. I like he, it, though. He, he got he, a championship. He, he told the truth. The best player. And as Rip said, when you win a championship, you have enough equity to say things like that. Yeah? Yes. The issue is this. You need your best players to be Absolutely. saying that. Right. Well, that's my point. Like, you're, this your is Mo Bucket saying that. that versus CP or Blake. We, we never thought Mo would be coming to L.A. to, to be a leader. He has yeah. the cachet the because of what he's that's accomplished. That's an issue. Right. He has the cachet, but I would love for Blake or CP. I want to hear those voices. Correct. Okay. And see, I like it from him, too, because on a simple fact, Blake and, and CP has been a leader of that team for so many years. So any, any any opportunity you got for another guy to come in and have a voice in that locker room, sometimes when you hear the same voice over and over, guys like continue to block eyes. it out, yeah. you know. So right. now That's for him like the to, to come in and, and have a voice and he just has success over there and now he get an opportunity to play against the team that he won a championship with and they go out and lay an egg, oh, my goodness, something's got to change. Well, maybe start I'm, to listen I'm more. sorry, but, I mean, whatever they do, they can't be going. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they should just go home, Tracy. Thanks. <laughs> I think you never know. Um, we take a quick break, but there's a lot more to come on the jump. Is it time for Mello and Phil to go their separate ways? We will discuss. Plus, with the Cavs playing the water bottle challenge during their blowout of the Knicks, oh, wow. disrespectful, the guys will weigh in next. This was the fun. jump is presented by Doers, the world's most awarded blended Scotch whiskey. Live true. Drink responsibly.